first of all, uh, thanks. Thanks for uh, organizing this uh, conferences. Um, also, uh, thanks for all the speakers. And I just uh, would like to start by emphasis that it could be uh, better to stick together instead of um, trying to see uh, which one is, is better, which fuel is better. Um, <clears throat> uh, also because of on fuel you, um, no one will comply. Um, now, if we um, check the final compromise on, um, on the text, so it's uh, really hard. Um, we'll see how we could um, work on that. So, um, methanol is a marine fuel. Um, I'm uh, Rafi Kemar, I'm manager of government and uh, public affairs in Europe. Um, I uh, represent Methanol Institute, so it's a trade um, association representing the wool um, and the main producer all around the world um, of methanol, but also all the um, transporter um, and uh, end user and um, distributor, so you have some uh, names of um, or uh, members. Um, so, about methanol, I think um, we can uh, also um, uh, stop on um, a few minutes on it um, by explaining the three different types of methanol. So the conventional one um, produced uh, with coal or natural gas, so it's um, the actual one um, that is available all around the world. You have also the blue methanol. It's um, a blending one made with um, natural gas um, and uh, renewable energy. So it's uh, the bridge um, to reach the different objectives set by um, the international organization or the regional one. And uh, green methanol, so it's um, made with uh, carbon neutrality uh, using um, a technology, a carbon capture um, utilization. And um, so it could normally fit um, <clears throat> and comply with all the um, legislation uh, at the EU and all around the world also. So the biggest challenge now is uh, to make green methanol uh, available uh, in enough amount for the demand. So <clears throat> on, um, I think that we'll uh, spend um, a, a more time on, on legislation and especially the original one at the EU. Uh, so the, the last uh, legislation, uh, last, uh, sorry, a mandate uh, set uh, an objective um, uh, by reducing 55% um, uh, of the uh, gas emission by 2030 and also uh, the carbon neutrality by um, uh, 2050. So to um, reach that, they set um, 13 texts and um, we will focus on two of them today. Um, so one on uh, fuel EU maritime, the alternative um, uh, fuels for the maritime sector and on the ETS, uh, emission trading system, uh, that will include the maritime sector um, in 2024. So on uh, fuel EU maritime, last week they uh, find a, a compromise on it. Uh, it means that uh, it will enter into force in uh, the next uh, two years. Oh, sorry. Uh, in the next um, uh, two years. Um, so what's the main uh, point on this text is uh, the greenhouse gas intensity um, targets uh, from 2020. So it will start by uh, 2% in 2025 and reach uh, 80% in 2050. So in this graph you can um, see, I mean it's um, a uh, big picture of the graph, of course, um, uh, we have to update it with the final um, uh, numbers of, of this compromise, but it gave uh, a big picture of uh, what, what type of fuel you should um, uh, order and, and focus on and, and, and invest on. And at the same time, they also introduce um, a part on a quota, a quota for RFNBO, so renewable, renewable fuels um, for an, from non biological origin. So it's a synthetic fuel, let's say, just like that. And by, um, so yeah, they introduce sort of um, tricky um, objectives. So if it's minus than 1% in 2030, um, they will increase the target by 2% uh, between 2030 and 2034. Uh, and uh, also they will uh, introduce a multiplier asked by member states um, of two between 2025 and 2034. So the baseline also used 
to measure the reduction of the, the intensity is uh, 91 gram CO2 equivalent per megajoule for the whole life cycle, so for um, the well to wake. Um, also one, part, one point super important on this text is um, the certification aspect. Um, so if you want to measure your emission, if you are a producer or end user, you will have to um, uh, monitor this certification aspects uh, because you can't uh, certify your production, um, whatever you're producing um, with really low uh, carbon emission or high carbon emission because you will have to refer to default value set by the commission. And for the methanol, it's 31 gram CO2 equivalent per megajoule. So it means that um, according to the whole life cycle, um, the end user will have 60 gram CO2 equivalent per megajoule for the combustion parts. And of this, uh, we'll have to decrease um, by every five years, as you can see on the targets. Um, on the ETS uh, Maritime, so it's um, uh, new on this new revision, um, the EU asked to introduce the, um, the maritime uh, sector. So um, one of the big, biggest things is um, the price of the, the CO2. So as you can see, it uh, increased a lot. And um, one of the um, a biggest challenge now, because it's not uh, finished, um, they didn't find a, uh, find a compromise, they are still working on implementing Act, so it's a, it, um, it's a subtext of this legislation. And um, we are working to uh, recognize the uh, advanced biofuels. Uh, on this implementing act to be sure that um, they will not be impacted on this uh, legislation. Uh, of course, uh, if you have more, if you have more question on those two texts or other um, legislation, we we can talk about it uh, after. So, um, just a, a big picture of um, uh, other texts that could uh, impact your business or um, your um, uh, partner. Uh, it's like the um, uh, Renewable Energy Directive, that is a super mess actually, um, not far than just yesterday evening, it was, uh, uh, they're still um, trying to find some compromise between uh, member states, um, trying to find some negotiation to introduce um, um, low carbon definition and the different objective of the low carbon in this text that will impact, of course, uh, the maritime industry and um, and us. Uh, so on, yeah, on this slide you can um, find like the different texts that uh, you should monitor. So the the um, uh, energy taxation directive, um, the um, renewable energy directive, the uh, fuel EU maritime, the um, emission trading system. Uh, also linked to the emission trading system, you have the carbon border adjustment mechanism. It's a new uh, introduction in this text that will um, um, ask if you operate outside of the EU to um, pay the, the, the equivalent of your emission uh, uh, if you want to enter or, or use the, the EU um, territory. And uh, also the alternative fuel for um, infrastructure uh, regulation. Um, so they find also compromise like uh, two days uh, two days ago, and um, uh, they, it's good I think for all the producer, uh, uh, hydrogen, ammonia, um, NG or uh, methanol because um, they will introduce uh, in the text that um, member states and port authority will be helped um, to um, set uh, installation for um, those uh, fuel directly. Um, yeah, at the international level also there are some work at the, the IMO, um, but because also other speakers spend um, more time um, on, on this uh, part, I will not um, go deeply to this. But um, just one slide to uh, explain the, the IMO strategy on the greenhouse gas reduction um, based on the, the actual emission and based on the, uh, the different target that they set and they talk about. Uh, so as you can see, there is a, a, a big gap. So that's why um, we have to find and, and, and work on different fuel for the maritime sector that um, could decarbonize the industry. Also. Um, 
a quick slide on um, the work uh, under the, the IMO. So um, uh, the specification of methanol as a fuel um, is uh, under development and especially um, we are I mean, there is some uh, document reference and the recommendation for the key parameter for the uh, marine application also. And the um, uh, final part on the capacity of the methanol, and especially on the E and biomethanol, uh, as you can see it grew and by 2027 um, it will be available by um, 8 uh, million tons. So you're right, it's not enough. But it's um, it's a really important uh, gap, and it shows also that it's secure investment, um, because uh, according to a last uh, study from uh, Standard Poor's, um, they said that um, the the order uh, of uh, methanol vessels are increasing, and they will also increase um, by uh, 2030, for example. It uh, it will pass to um, uh, from now actually it's uh, around uh, 50 and it will pass to 130 vessels. So it secured the investment, everyone as an end user, producer of uh, continuing to invest on uh, green metal, production of green metal, and it could also um, be aligned with all the obje objectives set by um, the EU and international. So we are operating all around the world, um, in the US, Brussels, um, India, Singapore, and China, so um, if you have any question, technical one or um, low, uh, legal one, uh, feel free to ask and thank you. Thank you.